Hi friends, welcome to Plexus Ortho. My name is Dr. Kanan Kumar and today we're going to discuss a topic called as achondroplasia for your uh, NEET PG exams. It's quite an important topic. Every other year you get at least one question on achondroplasia. Achondroplasia is very important because it is the most common form of disproportionate dwarfism that is seen in our country. Right, so you must know all the features of uh, achondroplasia because uh, quite a few questions have been asked in the past and I'm sure they will be asked in the future as well. So achondroplasia is the most common form of disproportionate dwarfism in our country right so most common form of uh, disproportionate dwarfism in our country what is the form of inheritance of this disease it is inherited in autosomal dominant fashion but more than 80 percent are new mutations more than 80 percent are new mutations but if there is an inheritance patterns the most common in a pattern of inheritance is autosomal dominant so it causes a defect in enchondral bone ossification. Enchondral bone ossification is, uh, is important for the lengthening of bones. It is present, enchondral ossification occurs in long bones, which are the bones which undergo intramembranous ossification, which is the other type of ossification. It is the clavicle and the skull. So therefore the clavicle, the trunk and the skull is normal in achondroplasia. And that is why you have a bigger looking skull as compared to the rest of the limbs. And this is what causes macrocephaly or it is called as bossing, frontal bossing, causes frontal bossing or macrocephaly. The nose is peculiar in shape and this is also because the, the nose is normal in size as compared to the rest of the limbs. So therefore this causes a defect in enchondral bone ossification and uh, the gene that is affected is FGFR3 gene or fibroblast growth factor receptor 3 gene. This gene is the one which causes uh, achondroplasia, whereas FGFR2 gene, remember what does it cause? It causes Apert syndrome. It causes Apert syndrome. So FGFR2 is Apert syndrome and FGFR3 is achondroplasia. So what are the risk factors, some of the factors that can cause, um, uh, lead to achondroplasia? It is a paternal age of more than 36. That is if the father is more than 36 there is a higher chance of um, achondroplasia. You know that the maternal age more than 35 causes Down syndrome, whereas a paternal age higher has a higher risk of achondroplasia. This is the most common form of disproportionate dwarfism. We have discussed that. It's a rhizomelic form of, dis of dwarfism. Rhizomelia is a shortening of the more shortening of the arm portion of the a limb and this is called as rhizomelic type. Mesomelic is something which is short in the forearm. The shortening of the forearm is much more than the arm. In achondroplasia, the arm is much more shorter than the forearm and this is called as rhizomelic type of dwarfism. Here the trunk height is normal, the trunk is normal, the head is normal, the skull is normal because they all undergo intramembranous type of ossification whereas the arm span and the length of the legs all reduce. So therefore they are very short and they have very short and stocky tubular long bones. So this is the difference between a type of dwarfism which is seen in achondroplasia and other proportionate dwarfism where the trunk and other limbs are also proportionately dwarfed. What do you see in the radiographs? You see a, a bullet shaped vertebrae also called as beaking of the vertebrae. You can see a bullet shaped vertebrae which is seen in a case of achondroplasia. Remember that you see what is called as a trident starfish and the reason for this trident uh, or uh, starfish appearance is because the middle finger is short and all fingers appear of the same length and this is called as a starfish. If you can see the thumb is not much shorter than the other fingers and the middle finger is quite short and therefore this is called as a starfish appearance where the five fingers appear to be of the same size. Then you also have the trident hand appearance where the middle finger and the ring finger become wide and divergent and so you have a trident like picture which one trident being the thumb right the second trident being the middle portion that is the index and middle portion and the other limb of the trident being the ring and the little finger so this is called as trident appearance of the hand the bones are short and stocky and there is a thick cortex as seen in the in this picture also the pelvis has a a champagne glass appearance that means it is more wide than in length so if it is more wide at the top and the length is less it is called as a champagne it appears like a champagne glass appearance and therefore these people have difficulty in having children and if at all they conceive then you'll have to do a cesarean section to deliver the child rather than a normal 
vaginal delivery so these are some of the radiological features of uh, achondroplasia so let us go through two representative questions that have been asked in your previous exams the first question is which of the following mutations are found in achondroplasia uh, so what does fibrillin 1 gene cause the first option is fibrillin 1 the fibrillin 1 gene causes a marfan syndrome right and we have just discussed fgfr3 is the right answer because fgfr3 mutation causes the achondroplasia whereas fgfr2 mutation causes apert syndrome then we have also discussed in the previous videos and uh, audios that uh, call 5 gene mutation causes osteogenesis imperfecta it causes osteogenesis imperfecta because it is a type 1 collagen mutation notch 1 gene mutation is not related to orthopedic problem of course notch 1 gene mutation can cause different types of leukemia including lymphoblastic leukemia now let's come to the second and final question and uh, this kind of recaps our uh, uh, achondroplasia topic discussion so the question is the following is false about achondroplasia what is false about achondroplasia is it autosomal dominant yes it is autosomal dominant of course many of them are new mutations but if inheritance occurs it is autosomal dominant in nature do we have a trident hand uh, appearance yes we do have a trident hand appearance or a starfish type of appearance is there mental retardation no there is no mental retardation so this is the false statement about achondroplasia let us look at the last one it is called does it have frontal bossing yes there is frontal bossing and macrocephalic appearance so uh, this was in brief about uh, this was briefly about achondroplasia i hope uh, this helps you in your neat pg exams uh, my name is dr kanan kumar thank you for hearing me out uh, thank you very much